Hi, everybody, and welcome to No Story is Sacred. If you've never listened before, basically we're four siblings who grew up talking about the art of storytelling. Now that we're adults, we're still talking about it, and we're inviting you to join the conversation. Uh, I'm Brendan, and uh, I would like to represent myself. I'm Pippin, and I love puns. Oh, God damn it! That's true. Uh, See where this is going. Dear Pippin, what have you actually contributed to this week's? I've done a bunch of puns. Basically. Jesus. <laughs> Pippin, contribute an original story. <laughs> At least you didn't <laughs> reference bird law, you fucking nerd. To be fair, I wrote this before I knew about bird law. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but now you know about bird law. No, I do know about uh, bird law. <laughs> I'm Alex, and quick sidebar. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I'm Kat, and uh, I've actually worked in a law office, so this will be cool. Uh, also, I would like to request permission to treat this podcast as hostile. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it would please the court. <laughs> Ooh, there's another title! Oh, shit. <laughs> wait, wait, but what are we talking about this week, everybody? Because well, this one's a little, I have to say, this is a little bit more obscure even than we manage generally. <laughs> and we're, we're going by the barest of uh, lines here because today we're uh, talking about an original story idea. Quote, by, unmarked, question mark? By Pippin. And, uh, <laughs> and listening audience, uh, when tasked with giving us some uh, notes to go on before going to this episode... <laughs> Pippin opted to have a bunch of <laughs> legal innuendo puns. Like, uh, no story, no idea, no characters, no plot, nothing that she wanted to really address and have, like, a professional group to, you know, take apart and put back together and help her, you know, reach the art that she's clearly reaching for. Like, no. Instead. Like, no themes, no, 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 no themes, no. Oh, greater her uh, allegories. He's no, no. He just puns. Just a bunch of fucking puns. I think it it started with what? <laughs> fucking puns. Oh. <laughs> and that's the level and quality that you're going to get to in today's episode. Was I a pun? Was, <laughs> was I a, I a fucking, fucking pun? pun? <laughs> and and so, into a show. <laughs> you're a Wow. What you hear from Pippin is pretty much I'm I'm guessing gonna be the bulk of, of her commentary. This like if you've ever wondered what Pippin sounds like gasping for laughter, uh, and and this is it. Yep. And that's oh. you know, that's next hour is what I'm This really, is our life now. Yeah, this is it. Um Listen, doesn't my joy bring you joy? <laughs> I don't know, Pippin, how many fucking puns did you include? Enough. <laughs> It was a couple of dozen, it seems like. Um, Jesus Christ. Because it Ugh. starts off with writ of attachment, which I think was just what kicked this off in the first place, right, Pippin? Yeah, well, no, I, tell the story, Pippin. Tell I, the fucking story. I, I, I would like to have an opportunity to explain myself. <laughs> All right, Plead the fifth, the- man. Plead the fifth. This is not going to go well for you. Take the stand. <laughs> I'll allow it. Uh, like, wait, wait, wait. I want to vo- void hear her, the witness. <laughs> So this is going to be filled with jokes about court shit that none of us understand. Oh no! <laughs> like there's popular media. There's, <laughs> yeah. Like later on when these get uh, written, there's going to be the uh, oh, a legal eagle episode where he just goes through them all and just shakes his head. Oh, Dare dream. you to write them just so that you can send them to him for free? No. There we go. Dare you? Yeah, yeah. Signed no. copies. Signed copies. Oh, and then he'll gently whisper in your ear, Indochino. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> I mean, here's a question, uh, not for Pippin this time. Uh-oh. Uh, Kat, as the yeah. resident uh, romance person, uh, yes. what's, the, what's the field of romance novels that are, like, court-centric? Here's what I'm thinking. Actually, so I'm not sure that there is much of a uh, a subgenre for that, but here's what I'm thinking. 
There absolutely should be. Right. Uh, because, because courtroom drama is a genre. Uh, courtroom thrillers, John Grisham exists. Uh, <laughs> Unfortunately. Whoa. What? Shots fired. You know what? If he makes money, good for him. Exactly. Yeah. I, um, I can't begrudge a writer for actually making a nice living. Yeah, fuck no. Uh, may we all be so lucky. Clink. That's us I clinking would our glasses. I'd love to have Hollywood ruin some of my work. Oh, Jesus. I would. Uh, it, oh, yeah. <laughs> Give me that check and good luck, fellas. <laughs> Enjoy. I just typed it, uh, courtroom romance into Google and, and here's a good read list of, uh, legal romance novels. Oh, goddamn. Nice. See, I figure it's, it's probably a, like one of those weird niche subgenres. And the nice thing about a niche subgenre is that if you can get into that, particularly with romance, you will have a group of readers who will buy every single fucking one of your books because there's nothing else out there (laughs) oh man i'm just looking through these titles in this goodreads book uh list that alex provided and a pip some of your pun titles are already here (gasps) but not all of them (laughs) (laughs) but wait wait guys guys yeah guys yeah. yeah. Pippin. Yeah. <laughs> I think Pippin needs to tell the story of why she has this I had this idea in the first place. Because, frankly, generally speaking, she doesn't strike me as the kind of person who'd be all about legal romances. So wait, wait, that made that sounded bad. Yeah. She is in favor of legal romance. <laughs> legal romance. None of us are in favor of. And that's not okay. Well but, but what about a bad romance? Rah, rah, oh shit, ah, that's ah, pretty ah. good. <laughs> I want your love and I want your revenge. <laughs> but that is that legal though? It's a good question. Ooh. So uh, um, So Pippin, could you could you give us the background and and <laughs> put off our um put off our having to deal with your puns for like another five minutes? So there I was. Once upon a time. <laughs> once upon a time. Uh working in a legal office with cat. Like five feet from me. Good job. Yeah, good times. And I was just doing some, like, scanning of old documents. It was fun. It was right after I had gotten my graduate degree. But before I had gotten, you know, a job in my field. Hmm. Real jobs. (laughs) Ha ha. Overrated. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) So I was just going through documents all day and free to think of anything else I wanted. Uh, Listening to podcasts, listening to podfic, whatever. Just hey. me going through old documents. Ooh, document. As you may or may not be aware, because I am real subtle about it, I play <laughs> it real close to the chest. <laughs> Fucking heard you. Um, uh, I am a big fan of Daredevil. <laughs> Who is it? Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Really? Because I had years. never fucking guessed. All Again. these years, I never would have guessed. Yeah. Again, Wait. I'm real subtle about it. <laughs> Holy Wait, so- shit. Guys, guys, the the pieces are all lining up into place. Guys, I don't know. I mean, is she really into depressed Catholics? <laughs> 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 Hitting things instead of dealing with their issues? <laughs> depressed Catholic with poor decision making skills? Doesn't sound like me. <laughs> is that why you're is that why you're sending into all these sending? Let me tell you, that's how I fucking sold it to her at the at the end. I had forgotten that that was a selling point, and then finally, I'm like, "Oh, Pippin, did I forget to tell you? There's a sad queer Catholic boy who makes bad decisions." And not even three days later, she's like, "Give me an episode." <laughs> I went like a moth to the flame. <laughs> is, is that the trick? Is that why I have to? Is that what I have to do to get? Let you to watch the shows imply that someone is Catholic like somewhere in it and sad and pre- preferably queer. I can, uh, I can solve it. I can, uh, I can. We, we, we. Al can fake this. He can match. God, and none of this is a point. I'm not sure yeah, how this on. turned into a roast of me. <laughs> <laughs> you should have known better. Yeah, I mean, you gave us what. 10 pun titles and they're like surely surely my siblings won't make fun of me for an entire fucking hour <laughs> oh god i i feel like this is you guys trying to reclaim uh dominance because i'm clearly better oh um, <laughs> oh pippin it's cute you think that it's whatever uh so anyway so uh a lot of legal terms get uh thrown around 
And one of the terms that got used... <laughs> in a legal to- office. Sorry. <laughs> I know, right? One of the terms that got thrown around a lot in that particular office was writ of attachment. Mm. Uh, because it was a thing that they were doing all the time. <laughs> Can't might even remember what it means, but uh, I don't... <laughs> Uh, I, I do, actually, but um, unfortunately, somebody's yelling outside, so I'm going to stay quiet for a while. <laughs> People can fucking Google it. It's true. And, you know, after hearing this enough times uh, and being of the sort of being the sort of person that I am, <laughs> I was all like, you know, what? that sounds like a romance title. <laughs> uh, your writ of attachment because you get attached to things. And as a clearly it needs to be. Uh, a legal romance because it's writ of attachment, and this is my life now. A, a rich a writ of attachment is when um, the court can attach your or, or basically lay claim to your uh, uh, possessions in order to sort of keep it in in hock uh, to theoretically pay off your debts. So the idea is if you've if you've gotten into debt somehow, um, and the court's like, "Oh shit, you owe people money." They can do a writ of attachment and attach like your car and your house and anything else that they can find. Your affection, your love. Well, that's the thing, Pippin. <laughs> they can take everything away from you, except love. <gasps> oh no, they took oh the writ too. Oh, oh shit. yeah, yeah. Oh. wait, wait, mm. wait. But that gets into insurance, <clears throat> and I'm not sure whether or not a ring counts as a uh, a piece of disposable, uh, whatever. Ooh, I mean, what kind yeah. of ring? Um, wedding rings. Well, you know, this is where all of a sudden a story idea can come about because we have the distraught uh, person that, like, maybe through like a, a prior marriage or something all they have left is that old uh wedding ring or engagement ring or something but there's a writ of attachment on it and so with the help of this other lawyer or whatever they're trying to make sure that we don't lose that last piece oh here's the thing yes Mm -hmm. clearly this is actually starring lawyers uh okay because again i have this one particular fictional character who happens to be a lawyer that i really like um Uh uh-huh Listen. Weird. I, don't, I, I, I do not need shit from you in particular, Kat. I <laughs> uh, don't think I didn't notice the insurance thing. Shut up. But yeah, no. Uh, what I'm thinking uh, that I didn't write down because why would I let you guys into, you know, my headspace? Uh, no, that'd be too easy. Too easy. Is a series of not super intense more light-hearted, fun romance stories mm-hmm. set in a law office, clearly doing things that lawyers wouldn't know about to do in a work space. Of course not. <laughs> we definitely know no stories that would suggest otherwise. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, starring high-powered uh, lawyers, possibly, you know, a series starring uh, different lawyers in the office of different inter-office romances, because why would you ever date someone not who you don't work with? I mean, obviously, that's that always works out really well. Uh, it, it's inefficient. <laughs> uh, but yeah, dear listeners, I do have like a whole list of legal terms that could potentially work as titles as well, because it just starts with writ of attachment. There's legal briefs, oral <laughs> arguments... <laughs> Cause of action, uh, oh, confidential Pippa. relationship. Uh, hey now, a return of service, vicarious liability, <laughs> and of course, there's the one that I provided that somehow eluded you. Oh, if it would please the court. There we go. So good. <laughs> that uh, one involves a judge. That one, frankly, <laughs> writes itself. I mean, wait, wait, wait. and it, or for her who's uh, looking thing for her. Uh, before, on the kinkier side, may I approach the bench? We're terrible people. That one's a sequel to Cause of Action. Hell yeah, it is. The sequel to that, again, is uh, uh, Standard of Care. <laughs> oh, I'm suddenly very into that one. Yeah, that, that's... Uh, and I don't want to talk about why. Thank you. Uh, okay. That that is, and apologies into in advance for what I'm about to say. Uh, the BDSM trilogy. 
<laughs> oh, no. I rescind my previous comment and wish to have it stricken from the record. Thank you. Ooh, stricken from the record. Ooh. Stricken from the record. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what going on the list. <laughs> okay, all right. Let's let's get into some brass tacks here. Let's try to what? Let's try to. A- I know. Let's try to actually take this fucking seriously. <laughs> Why? Peregrine <sighs> MacDonald. Uh, permission to treat this uh, author as hostile. Granted. Uh, Peregrine MacDonald. Um, <clears throat> isn't it true that? <laughs> I, 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 I can't actually, like, I, technically I know how to do this, but uh, I don't want to. Pippin, do you want this to be a, uh, you said that you wanted these to be sort of uh, fast and, and light and what have you. What is your heat level that you're envisioning for this? Is it sweet? Is it spicy? Are we talking like, then they kiss and isn't that nice? Or do they fuck? Um, <laughs> I'm not sure I want to answer that. Uh, it, I'm going to pull uh, the... Judge- uh, Your Honor, can uh, you uh, can you compel I, her? No. <laughs> oh fuck! I'm gonna I, I pull feel... the. I don't want to have that conversation in front of siblings card. <laughs> oh fuck! Oh. Fuck! Sake. What I mean is, it oh, really overruled. makes a difference on. <laughs> it makes a difference as to how you write your fucking story and market it, Pippin. Right. So you, it makes a difference how to write uh, uh, your fucking story. In fact, <laughs> it's important. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, mm. So, so Pippin, what's your thought on this matter? It depends on the story, because I imagine there can be a range of ratings among the different stories. Uh, but mm-hmm. some of them probably get a bit spicy. You know what? You could have that. That's the thing. You could uh, you could have a universe where yeah. you could have like a lot of different... The only thing is, you know, you just got to make sure that your marketing is a little different, because people who go into something... Like, uh, who is it? Um... Gail Carriger, I think mm. is how you say her last name. I think so. Um, in her romances, which are, you know, I, I, I would say pretty, like, with medium, maybe. Mm. Um, but if she does spicy, um, <laughs> she does Gail T. Carriger or something like that. It's just a little something so that people know to, to differentiate. I mean, there are so many different ways to abbreviate my name. Yeah. I got I options. Mean, you got so many options. But, or you could just be a whole, like, you could, you could make yourself an entire publishing house of fake names to go with every vibe you want to go with. The dream. Right? Me and uh, my sock puppet army. (laughs) Pippin, this is terrible. But as you know, I do have a terrible publishing uh, uh, plan. And so I encourage you to write these terrible things and have all your sock puppets. (laughs) And we'll make it happen. We'll put it on Amazon. It'll be amazing. No way this carefully thought out plan (laughs) could possibly (laughs) go wrong. All right. Uh, Yeah, go on. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So, now I can't help but think that I'm just recreating Grey's Anatomy, but with lawyers. There's nothing necessarily wrong with that. I've never seen Grey's Anatomy. Uh... Oh, it's ten fucking seasons of Grey's Anatomy. Um, Jesus Christ! Wow. Really? Yeah. But you know what, though? It's successful. It's six. I I watched it a bit more than ten because I got to the beginning of the season where Derek, spoiler alert, dies. Um, bah, bah, bah. Uh, but I didn't actually get to that bit, and I'm kind of mad about it because I didn't like him, <laughs> unlike everybody else on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, because I was like, McDreamy, he's a creep. Oh, is this the guy who's the main character and in, in, or one of the main characters in Enchanted? Yeah. Ah, okay. Hey, he was Robert? Yeah. Hmm. Huh. Listen, I get... <laughs> no, at I, I... some other point, y'all can ask me my opinions about Grey's Anatomy, because I do have a few. Um, but yeah, no, basically. Just a couple, one or two. Yeah, well, one or two. But basically, that sort of vibe. And actually, if we just want to wholesale steal it. Okay, well, give us a quick briefing on Grey's Anatomy, Pippin, then we can steal it. Yeah, because uh, I have no fucking clue. Oh, so Grey's Anatomy, uh... Is, <laughs> she's like, I was waiting for this moment. <laughs> uh, Finally, my time has come. <laughs> it's a long-running Shonda Rhimes TV show. I forget how many seasons it had. It, it might be on its 18th. Um, featuring uh, Meredith Grey. And at the beginning of this uh, the uh, series, she is an intern... Resident? Resident. She's the lowest of the uh, rung, lowest rung doctor. 
in the hospital. I believe that's uh, intern. Yeah, I think interns. Yeah. Wait, unless they're unless they're students doing rotations. I think they're students they're students doing their rotations. Because that's how that's like a thing that happened in Scrubs sometimes, as I Wait. recall. Oh, that makes it super creepy then. And if <laughs> if I recall, oh if yes, if, oh, oh no. no, okay, go, well, go on. To be fair, uh, it she's uh, it starts like on her first day at this hospital after she's done whatever doctors do uh, to become doctors, and the night before she had hooked up with a cute guy uh, at the bar. Uh, a classic setup, right? You know, I and I think he was even there when she woke up, and they had to like go to work. Uh, and they're all, and he's like, maybe we can do this again. She's like, yeah, and they were going to have a good time. Uh, and then she gets to work, and it turns out that uh, her hookup uh, was the head of neurosurgery. Bwam, bwam. Uh, Whoops! And she forms friendships with the other interns. There's ups, there's downs. Other people have big, terrible relationship choices. Uh, and somehow those two crazy kids make it work, even though he has an ex-wife he hasn't divorced yet. Um, so I really don't like him. Though after he does die, spoilers, there's a, at a doctor review for her thing, like, one of the doctors on that board is the doctor who operated on him, and she scolded it him for or his own confidence so hard he had a heart, heart attack so which is uh, impressive oh. would that we all had that power but yeah and also she has a best friend uh christina yang who is played by sandra oh <gasps> sandra oh and that's why i watched 10 seasons <laughs> okay that's legit okay hey, Pippin. i accept that i watched phil and eve for that Pippin, uh, you know that ultra violent cartoon i mentioned yes she voices one of the main characters god that's damn all. it Oh, Sandra, oh, I do, I do so much for you. Um, <laughs> but yes, no, Christina has the great line at some point, uh, just before she leaves the series, uh, going, you know, Derek may be dreaming me, but he's not the son. You are. Oh. Uh, yeah, no, there's a reason I watched 10 seasons. Uh, and not just because I was in grad school. <laughs> okay. No. 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 Anyway. So, and then, you know, it moves on, and and these days she, like, owns the hospital. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, that starts to sound like maybe fucking your uh, head of neurology is a good idea. I mean... That's the lesson we're hearing, right? I mean, in romances... You could, yeah. The new Here's intern the uh, hooked up with a guy at the uh, bar the night before her the day first day of the job, and it turns out he's one of the partners. Here's the thing, guys. Here's mm. the thing. It is okay and natural to be i'm gonna say it turned on <laughs> turned on by things that you would not want to happen in real life that's true that's okay and in fact fiction is an important place to put those feelings like yeah. excellent i've worked that out there i know i wouldn't want it in real life but that scratched the little you know itch in the back of my brain and done yeah like i mean the entirety of you have a uh, Regency Roman, and so it's like the exception of maybe Darcy and even Darcy. Like you're like, I wouldn't really want to be in a relationship with this person. Yeah, yeah. Well, to be fair, we all know Elizabeth Bennet fell in love with the house first. <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, <laughs> to think all this could I could have been mistress of all this. So I mean, I don't falter. So to to steer it onto. A uh, writ of attachment, or uh, whatever we call this nebulous book here, uh, to steal, I mean, borrow, I mean, take inspiration <laughs> from Grey's Anatomy here. Uh, I guess we could have our our protagonist character, like she could be fresh from law school. Yeah, she's doing her internship. Is it internship or is it like an apprenticeship when it comes to lawyers? So, uh, I think they're interns. Uh, there, there is like, I like can you do like intern at a firm for like two years as part of your uh, as part of your law school stuff. If mm -hmm. I if I recall, then you take the bar. Oh, mm. sounds right. That so sounds you do like internships thing. over the summer. Hmm? Oh yeah, summer intern. Yeah. <gasps> oh yeah, like uh, 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 like the stupid college students do. Yeah. I love you, college students. I don't think you're actually stupid. But, uh, uh yeah. No, so, so I, I, I think 
in this case, we want her to be like new lawyer, so like just past the bar and is looking to join in as the lowest on the ladder. Yeah. Which is always a great place to end up fucking other people in. <laughs> uh, literally, figuratively. Indeed. So does that mean that the person and she hooks up with his at the bar is a partner? Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Big time. Oh, but that could be like a source of like initial drama or something is like, you know, really probably can't. Well, I guess they could work together because they don't have to worry about like conflicts of interest at the workplace necessarily. They're not working on opposite court sides. Or could they? I, I mean, mean I, I feel like that's a later book. Yeah, eventually when she leaves the firm uh, for... Uh, when, she's, when she goes into, pri- uh, into a... a private practice. Oh, oh my god, another title. Oh, Actually, here's the thing. That is the title of uh, the Grey's Anatomy spinoff. Oh my god. Actually, I will say, I, I like the idea of her starting off as an intern in one company, uh, uh, fucking around there, and then she gets <laughs> sniped by a different uh, uh, whatever... And they oppose. And then you get, of course, you know, uh, lovers to enemies, which is always great. <laughs> I mean, that could be uh, one of the other characters. You went to that law firm? Oh, yeah. That's my evil half-brother's law firm. <gasps> Bartholomew. Oh, they're, my God, are they twins? Are they identical twins? Well, they're they're half-brothers, I just said. Oh. So, yes. Identical twin half-brother? <laughs> <laughs> like, but wait, I thought you said he was your twin. Yes. But... It's technically possible, yes. Okay, I'm not going to... Let's not get... <laughs> <laughs> not going to think about that one too deeply. <laughs> All right, Pippin. All right, yes. question number two. Yes. Question number two, in yeah. terms of real, real shit. Mm-hmm. That's what this are podcast you... is about. This is what this podcast is about. We this are episode here to, specifically. To help Keeping it real. You. Keeping it real. Pippin. Yeah. In this book, in this series that you are definitely going to write. Uh-huh. How are you playing it? Are you playing it straight, so to speak? Um, or are you kind of going a Chuck Tingle way of this? I mean, wh- where's the line? Are you, you know, is it a uh, crack treated real? What's what's the, what's that particular tag on AO3? <laughs> Do you uh, know the one I'm talking about? Crack taken seriously? Yeah, crack taken seriously. Or, or are you just having a good time with the half brothers who are also identical twins? <laughs> uh, you know, I, I have not yet read any of Chuck Tingle's stuff because I'm a Philistine. Um, Clearly. Um, but that being said, yeah, I, I I think I take this fairly seriously for all that Ooh. it's also, you know, sweet, like, wish for fun stuff. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. The theory so, stories with serious uh, emotions. Uh, yeah. Just, you know, with kissing. Aw. Now, here's my question. Here's a, a follow-up, which is, you know, it, what do you find interesting, aside from the obvious puns, <laughs> what do you find interesting about the, uh, interesting, or, or what do you want to explore within that dynamic? Uh, well, you know, I love me some competence. Ooh, competence. Oh, so we're going with a legally blonde approach here. Ha, I, I do love legally blonde. <laughs> But yeah, uh, people who are very good at what they do and mm-hmm. also tend to dress up in suits, which, you know, I approve of, you know, and have, uh, are experts in a topic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, uh, no, I, I, I got lost in the competence of it all. That's okay. Yeah. Clearly, I mean, so to me, to me, that tells me that that's kind of where your event horizon is in terms of, what interests you about writing romance in this field? Like for me, when I'm writing romance, I like, you know, random historical details. Just how much underwear do they have to take off? The answer is more than you think. And less than you think. Bum, bum, bum. This isn't about you. Shut up. Anyway, the point is, but it, it, I don't think I would write a legal thing. Like, yeah, unless I was doing crack, but I wouldn't do crack taken seriously. And And this highlights for me one of the many glorious differences between us. Are you prepared to do all the research? I mean, I'm prepared to do enough research. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so competence porn, right? So your main character, uh huh, is she the competent one? They're all competent. Or somebody That's else. the thing. They're all competent. She, to be fair, is still learning, which is uh, different. So you get, oh my God, hey, Pippin. Mm. Is she learning about more than one kind of thing? 
No. God damn it. Pippin, that's like classic romance. <laughs> Listen, that's not her vibe. Okay, different vibe. She's learning about law from him, but she's teaching him a thing or two about love. Yes. There you that go. That I'm here for. <laughs> like, oh my god, and and that's your three quarter argument right there. Three quarters through the romance. Um, you know, uh, uh, you have to have the big turn where everybody thinks, oh my god, are they going to break up? Right? Classic. Well, that's the argument. She's like, you know, you may think that you know a whole lot about the law, but you don't know shit about your own feelings, or something like that. Yeah, she has to be the emotionally competent one. Otherwise, it feels like he's taking advantage. Very true. Oh. Uh, Though, then I mean, he what, is. He yeah, definitely yeah, is. Yeah, he is. Uh, but then doesn't that become like he's kind of a man child with a, a, in a fancy suit? Yes and no. It depends on it's how you play it. It's a, yeah, it's a very like you you got to be real careful with it. If, uh, basically. To my mind, a good recipe for romance is that uh, uh, character A and character B, um, they both are super competent in one thing and super shitty in the other. Woo! Um, and those two shitty and competencies complement each other. Because if they're both bad about talking about their feelings... Nothing gets done. You're fucked. <laughs> or if they are, they have to be like in different ways. Like maybe that's the journey for one of them being like, yeah, no, I'm going to get better at my feelings. And the other one's like, I'm pretty sure I don't need to. And the, the first one's like, oh, I've learned so much. And the answer is yes, you absolutely do. <laughs> Again, this goes right back to things that you wouldn't want to necessarily deal with in real life. Yeah. is okay to deal with in books. Which is the whole entire point about doing fiction in the first place. Let's be real. Yeah, fiction. <sighs> fiction. Uh, these and stories like that are actually really important so that you can have places to explore, as discussed before. So here's another question about yeah. the book itself sure. in terms of structure. Ready Is there going to be one <laughs> big court case going on in the kind of background of this book? Or is it going to be like several different court cases we're doing like... Uh, life in the year like year of the life uh kind of kind of story oh hmm. and like those smaller court cases could be reminiscent of themes that are currently dealing with with the main plot but whatever i mean it, it could be a bunch of little court cases uh that help solve a larger uh court case yes mm. and, and i mean technically a lot of court or cases can can last a year or more. Mm, true. Yeah. So, true. Like, like, you could have that, like, that particular... Oh, Pep, you need, uh, you need, you need uh, dis a pun for discovery. Don't I? I thought I had one. Do you? I mean, I might not. I just might have thought I did. <laughs> that sounds like you. Huh. I mean, I have exculpatory evidence. Um, there's... Was it, um... Requesting discovery? No. There's a different phrase. Uh, discovery phase... Yeah, phases. No, nah, it's not yeah, sexy. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. I think that might be why it's not already on the list. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh wait, um, uh, uh, found in discovery. Ooh. Uh. Or revealed in discovery. There we go. Know. Revealed in discovery is good. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. good. She says about her own, <laughs> her own phrasing. Um, but you know what though, I think that we're getting off track. Yep. Because there were, we're not talking about a whole series. This happens to us every fucking time. Huh. We're like, oh, the McDonald's siblings. What should we do? Why have one book when we can create a fucking universe? Okay, okay. Here's <laughs> an idea. So we have, like, uh, the partner who is clearly involved in the big case. But, like, as the uh, book goes on, their attention's being taken more and more away from... Uh, from our main character or whatever because of the big case. Uh, yeah. And so that's why, like, as the book goes on, she's getting, like, m some more responsibilities and all that just because, like, other uh, other lawyers in the firm have to uh, take up some of the slack. Mm -hmm. Like, somebody needs to do the filing. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. But, like, that's some other thing that could also be adding tension in any kind of relationship is like the big case is not going well and then we could that that could tee up the moment later on towards like the climax of the book where it's like 
not only do we have like uh the romantic uh plot line being resolved but also around that same time like some little revelation from our protagonist is the thing that cracks the case wide open and they're gonna win that case after all guys it was all about feelings (laughs) uh yeah so so the uh intuition versus facts or whatever what what's (laughs) What's the I thing? mean, to be fair, I, I do think you're going to have to pretty much say that Legal Eagle will not enjoy your work and and have it be about, you know, uh, sure, there's evidence, but what about motive? The motive was love. Like, let's give it a grade for legal re- le- realism. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but but no. maybe maybe they find like through reviewing that at the end they, they they have like one witness who was not ever interviewed because nobody thought it was important and then boom that's the thing that cracks it all open i don't know i mean i mean that's valid that that does seem like the sort of thing that i would actually have to do the research part for yes. oh you need, oh, you need Dude, surprise you... witness oh a surprise ah, yeah. witness well no as a uh, as one of the titles Ooh. Ooh. oh my god it's the third brother <laughs> huh and he, he's evangelical. Uh, what? No! Witness, cause, cause it's a- Oh god, ew! No. <laughs> <laughs> Gross. Okay guys, we've been talking about this for a while. I would like to zero in on some stuff. Okay. Pippin. Cat. Your first book. Short. We've all agreed is writ of attachment, correct? Yeah. Okay. In order for that pun to make sense, mm-hmm. you're going to have to have some kind of debt collection. <laughs> Is what I'm thinking. Oof. Okay. Yeah, that's what's going on. That's okay. You can have against a contractor. It's fine. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, so. Or the case is, uh, is like, uh, is like a, a salmon and, and between in two megacorps. I mean, maybe, sure. I don't know enough about that. You will, you will have to do research, Pippin. I'm sorry. Um, can you give us, can you give us right now, based on everything we've told you and everything we've discussed? Can you give us a rundown of your female and, well, actually, actually, character A and character B? Just a brief rundown of these two characters and uh, give your elevator pitch for what this is based on everything we've talked to you about. So. Are they queer? Uh, in as much as everybody I will ever write is, um, (laughs) this is going to open on a uh, heterosexual relationship, uh, though maybe one or both of them are bi just because of who I am. As a person. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, uh, this is Grey's Anatomy meets a law firm. Nice. Always <laughs> good to get that kind of, uh, uh, give, give the audience an immediate idea of what you're doing. Right? I, I know a thing or two. Uh, I've hung out with writers once or twice. Once or twice. Met their eyes across crowd bar. Um, <laughs> it features a, uh, young woman just out of law uh, school starting her b- first big job. And opens the night, uh, the morning after, uh, her big celebration to start her new job mm-hmm, mm-hmm. with a cute guy in her bed who she has to leave right away or else she's going to be late. Oh my God. Can he try to, con- I'm sorry, I'm interrupting you, but already I'm like, can he try to convince her to stay? And it's not that important. And then later it turns out as a boss, he's like a total fucking hard ass when it comes to being late. I expect punctuality. You need to arrive here uh, this time. I'm on the dot. No, let her know early. Someone who wants to talk about early. What? 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 <laughs> I do think that you need to try to avoid, um, unless it's in what you're into, Christian v- Grey vibes. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, if you're into it, I don't. I don't judge, Pip. I don't. I do judge. Christian but I, I, Christian Grey is not invited to this party. Okay. <laughs> anyway, go on. Uh, and imagine her uh, shock and surprise when she sees him again at the law firm as her new boss. Will they find love? Will she be able to look him in the face again? Will, will she find out how he managed to managed to get uh, get here before her when and, and she left <laughs> when he had even put on his pants? And most importantly, will she win this case? Very important. Very important. You know, I I think I think you're good, man. Because also, here's the important part about this, because you're setting her up as an intern, as somebody who's new to the field, you get to educate the reader, too, for the rest of the series. Yeah. Uh, Always also, great. 
Also very important, uh, she does prioritize uh, her job. Nice. Like, oh. getting the guy, great if you can manage. The job's important, though. Listen, you can get guy. they're a dime a fucking dozen. I but mean, she job. got that one real easy. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that was not difficult. <laughs> He's like, um, but I am a partner. She's like, ah, eh, so are a lot of people. <laughs> Come on now. I mean, I'm going to be one someday. It's no big whoop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I'm sort of picturing her as like a Darcy type from Marvel. Ooh, maybe. I'm into it. Sorry, that's just me having my my, my personal moment about Darcy. <laughs> Darcy like, Lewis. Darcy meets Elle Woods. Oh, my God. Bit of Jennifer uh, Walters, uh, who's She-Hulk. <laughs> she's a lawyer, too. Of course she's a lawyer. That's awesome. Pippin. Yes. Very important question. Mm-hmm. Now that we've talked about this, are you going to write it? <laughs> it's about as likely as anything else. God so, damn it. So, not at all. Even so though... So after my best frenemy is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How's that coming along, Pippin? Yeah, Pip. How's that going? You know what? This is why I don't want to talk to you people. <laughs> I have editors right now who are asking me, where is my best friend of me? I mean, could you call one God. right now? <laughs> I probably fucking could. Do we need to get them on the phone? Do we need to have a guest star, Pippin? <laughs> why am I the one getting shit? You're the one who actually writes for money. I'm the one who is actually late. <laughs> oh, I mean, that's Pip, so true. you do have editors that want your work. Yeah, I don't have editors who want my work. They're just contractually obligated to demand it. You have ones <laughs> who actually want it. Oh. <laughs> anyway. <Got it. laughs> you all suck. I hate you. Aw. I you love, love you. Uh, oh, yay. Guys, normally we would play the title game, but for but once. We had like for once. several dozen. <laughs> then I propose a new who game then. What? <gasps> A variation, what? if you will. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Uh, Can you swirl your brandy glass while you say this? It's really important to me. Oh, uh, oh, shit. <laughs> I'm swirling this, and this unlit candle. <laughs> <laughs> That's the vibe I'm looking for. Thank you. Right. Uh, the variation is, uh, simple. Name that character. <gasps> Name the character, Pippin. Yeah, but we need we need a new we need a name for this game. Oh, uh, um, oh, I am Spartacus. <laughs> or I dub thee. I dub thee's pretty good. I'm going with what's in a name. Ooh, Ooh. what is in a name? Would not a rose by any other name? Right, smell is sweet. <laughs> All right, so uh, what's in a Spartacus? Um, <laughs> what's in a Spartacus? <laughs> oh, I mean, uh, let's be feel that's actually the best. Yeah, what's in a Spartacus is pretty fucking good. Yeah. <laughs> <gasps> of course, if we had to watch the best movies, is Some Like It Hot and Sporadicus. <laughs> <laughs> also has lawyers in it. Also has lawyers in it. Oh my god, Pippin. This we could have had it all. I feel like I come by this obsession, uh, honestly. Oh, Fair. Man, we should rewatch Clueless. We should rewatch Clueless. Is there a, that's for the Paul Rudd fest that we still need to make up. We yeah. have Chris's in uh, 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 near the end of the year. July. Uh, we could. It's Christmas in July. <laughs> Instead of Christmas, it's Paul Rudd. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, no. If we're going to do that, uh, then uh, then our episode would just be a clip of Mac and me. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh man. Uh, and so we're already then, talking about what to do for Brendan's uh, uh, celebration. We, we have to figure out Paul Red time, but when we do, I, I propose that Clueless be first. Yes, yes. That being hmm. said. So the uh, male romantic lead is named Paul. No, oh, jeez. <laughs> Fucking nice. Uh, are the fellow partners on the firm? Um, uh... John, Duke, and John? <laughs> wow. <laughs> I was, I was going to say, hey, hey, George, John, and... Uh... <laughs> and, Ringo? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, uh, guys. I like how you went, Beatles. I went because of who I am, and we established this. Uh, I went with Catholicism. Wow. <sighs> Pippin, you fucking nerd. Oh, God. Okay. Well, in either case, neither of those are valid. What? Because, because, Pippin, you said you were going to write this straight. So to speak. The male romantic lead is Paul. Paul can, that's fine, but no shenanigans with the names of other people. No, no Beatles, no Gospels, Missy. 
side. <laughs> Unless it's well, a lot more subtle. The one we're basing this off of, Grey's Anatomy, has the character main character Meredith Grey, whose name comes from a medical textbook. <laughs> Yeah, but that's related. For some odd reason, I kept on thinking Bianca, but like shortened to B. Oh, I like Ooh. that. <gasps> Bianca. Oh, oh my God, Beatrice you could growl Bianca. Or Beatrice. Oh. Just because she's my favorite. Uh, she's from Much Ado About Nothing, which is my favorite Shakespeare play. Okay, what if it's secretly a Much Ado About Nothing? Ooh. Mixed with Grey's Anatomy. Oh, shit. Wait, wait, so. You know what, though? No, 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 fuck that, fuck that. Save that for a later one. When they're rivals, where they used to date, and now they're rivals, but the spark's still there. Spark's you're still right, there. You're right, you're right, you're right. Beatrice is over there. Uh, but that hmm. being said, Beatrice is a great name, and calling her B is great. That's yeah. true. And then, and of course, uh, Benedict <laughs> would be Benny. Yeah. yeah. Benedict gets to, gets to stay Paul. <laughs> yeah, because we don't want to have both protagonists uh, have a B name. You want to have some differentiation. Yeah, it gets weird. Yeah. Which is one of those things where fiction is is not as real as reality. But if you do stuff that makes, like, that is closer to reality, it looks faker. Which is similar to, um, I guess, was it Spotify had a randomizer for the music? Mm-hmm. Um, and that was a genuine randomized. However, because it was genuinely random... Sometimes songs happen twice in a row or right next to each other or whatever. And so people are like, this isn't actually random. They had to create a fake random. Yep. Because well, humans are weird. Well, also, uh, well, also random. The, random with hand computers. There is no actual random computer. Uh, true. Randomness is an illusion. <laughs> it's all based Everything. on. It's all based on on an arbitrary variable. Blah, blah, blah. I have an important announcement. Uh huh. Yes. Uh, Paul has a cat named John. Okay, I'll accept that. Okay, I'll accept yeah. that. Yeah, that's, that I accept that. Because here's the thing, Paul, he could just like the Beatles. Yeah. See, that's that's something where he has control over it, whereas the other one is something where the author has control of it, and that's not fun. I mean, it, it can be fun, it just depends on what you're aiming for, but if you're aiming for serious, then authors doing weird jokes... Actually, what am I talking about? Authors doing weird jokes is the best. It's just an author. Anyway, yeah, he has a cat named John, I love that. Does she have also? Does she have a dog named Ringo? No, oh. no. I'm trying so hard. Two on the nose. He could he could say that she should get one, and then she'd be like, no. Uh, then she gets a dog and names it Yoko. Um, <laughs> oh my god, perfection, perfection. Anyway, uh, that's later. <laughs> that is later. So there's Paul. There's uh, Beatrice. Beatrix. Mm-hmm. Beatrice. Beatrice. I like. I mean, both is good, but. I like Beatrice. Uh, their pets, John and Yoko. Jesus. <laughs> Which implies something I didn't mean to imply, but here we are. Here we are. Oh well. Um, and then, and then the adventure awaits. Yeah, and basically, here's, they, they're like the main characters of like the first, uh, story or so, and then background characters of, uh, future ones. Because that's the way romances are awesome. Yeah. You don't need more sequels about them. You just need little check-ins to make sure they're still happily ever after. Yep. They're still here. They're still in love. Yep. We're still fucking fantastic. <laughs> just bought a house. That's all Amazing. you need to know. It's an office party. We see them. They're laughing while they share some dip. Beautiful. Yeah, that's all I need in life. Right? That's something people didn't understand about the Bridgerton thing, where uh, the, the Duke's not coming back or whatever. It's like, mm. no, of course he's not. He never was going to. He's not in the next books. At most, well, he's also, mentioned. Yeah. And you don't need more. All you need to know is that they're still happy and fucking and possibly children. I don't know. I mean, That's they what do, happens. They do canonically have children. There you go. And but this is what happens when you start introducing a, a new genre to a genre to the, the tropes of a genre to an audience that is unfamiliar with them. Yeah, all the action is ha- happening in London. He's off hanging out in his dukedom or whatever he has no reason for the action to be over there nor should they meanwhile everyone else is having weird queer adventures uh somewhere in this whole universe there is a brief story just set in a coffee shop with no lawyers like they show up to order coffee (gasps) yes but it's actually just about other people this is why you need to write this for me pippin and then i will publish it through my weird stupid publishing firm listen Maybe I'll do it when Alex 
gets me a fop. Hey! <gasps> whoa, 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 Oh, side swipe. <laughs> hey, that's a good point. Hey, Alex. Hey, Al. <laughs> hey, Alex. How's, um, how's, how's, uh, how's your space fops doing? Uh, he's fine. He's, he's, he's currently, he, uh, rambling. Rambling in uh, rambling uh, hung space pic- Piccadilly. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what's the name of the first book? The uh, the second one was The Orphaned Light. The first one was what? Body in the Void. Body in the Void. Yeah. You've got the best title of all of us. You're yeah. sitting back there not writing shit. <laughs> yeah, Al. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, what do we got on Brendan? <laughs> See, this is the beauty about doing improv shows, is that I've got nothing, and that's okay, because that's the entire point. You gotta be there, man. It's like trying to describe a dream. You can't. But, Brent, the points don't matter. what happened to Escape from Flavortown? Yeah, Brent. Well, you guys never want to play D&D in podcast form, so there we are. You never let me be a camel. Because I don't want to run that. (laughs) (laughs) Well, whose fault is that? The camel. You know, you could play a character who turns into a camel. Could I? Yes. That's in theory. The, yeah. There's a mechanic that would allow <laughs> the for that. The DM says, in theory, you could. You could be a druid with wild shapes. So long as you're aware that a camel is a thing you can turn into. <laughs> Have you seen a camel once before? <laughs> oh, man. So... I like how I'm the only one who's actually working on, like, a thing. It has the shittiest title. It has, theoretically, the the least amount of exciting... We've never talked about it on the podcast, but, yeah. The editors we know in real life know nothing about it. (sighs) I think that this really is the peak of our bullshit, guys. (laughs) No, we're back on our bullshit. (laughs) (sighs) Alright, guys, um... I think uh I think we have enough for Pippin to uh somehow steer herself into this if she ever finishes her other work. <laughs> I came out here to have a good time. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah we're yeah. punishing you for it. God damn it. It's your own fault. Little miss, how many puns? Pippin, come talk about one of your original stories. Pippin, we know you have it. Pippin, talk about the lawyer one. <laughs> Pippin, be an equal part of this podcast so maybe uh get on that okay pippin who if you're not careful i'll stop doing anything (laughs) (laughs) i'll i'll bribe you with stories you know what kind (laughs) (laughs) oh i was going to i was about to dismiss you but then it's like oh no Pippin keeps wanting all these stories for Always Sunny, and and then I'm like, we'll write them. And she's like, no, you write them, Kat. I'm like, I literally have to spend my writing time on things that literally I, give me money. I am not sure that is an accurate description of what happened. Do I have to find the fucking quotes? Do mm. I? <laughs> okay, wait, no. No, oh. that's not what this is about right now, Kat. <laughs> So yeah, that was Pippin's story, and now Pippin can take us out of this uh, long national nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, time for the closing arguments. Oh, oh. No. oh. had one more. Oh, that's, you got to save that one for the last book in the series when you're closing it up. You oh, know? yeah. I mean, you you gotta. Yeah. Ooh, that's when they have the biggest fight. Oh my god. Well, yeah, but like you, you that's when you're about to send them off of Reichenbach Falls. You know, yeah. you're just done. You're done yeah. with it. All right. All right. All right. Before we go, does anyone have anything to plug? Uh. Oh, uh, yes. So uh, right now I have a uh, short story out from Apex Magazine, uh, which you can purchase, although it will become free uh, early June. And that is Demon Fighter Sucks. It is the story that um, I... I the last story I sold before our mom died and the first one that got published after. And so it is, uh, it's, it's weirdly special. Um, and I think pretty okay. So not a bad thing to, to, uh, for, for her to have. I also have a, uh, a newsletter, a, well, a microzine called the small thoughts and minor hours magazine, which is free to read because I like people reading my stuff. 
Uh, you can get to that from patreon.com slash Catherine Creighton, but you don't have to pay for it. And finally, I'm writing a book for uh, Heart's Choice, which is an imprint of Choice of Games. Uh, and maybe someday I will actually turn it into my editor. And I'm uh, I'm still doing the improv stuff. Uh, we had our first live show uh, just the other day. Um, Woo! Of course, masked up and outside and all that good stuff. Uh, it felt good to be uh, actually using my legs again in scene what? work. What? Yeah. Yeah, it was weird, man. Did you... You don't have legs. Did you... <laughs> We've met you. Did you move to your mark? Ooh. Why'd you do that, Al? Uh, <laughs> uh, it, it was a lot of uh, frantic running around and generally being idiots in public, which, you know what? It's fun. And yeah. we still have our online shows that you can see on the Arcade Comedy Theater's YouTube page. Go check it out and... Be at least mildly amused or come up with fresh new excuses to avoid other people's improv shows by saying you're watching this one. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Which, you know, as as we kind of come out of the other side of uh, all that uh, uh, quarantine fun, you might need those excuses. Oh my god, we have to go back to having social excuses, you guys. Right? Uh... Here's what I suggest. Uh, now that we are you know, going outside uh, and returning to the outside world, go to an improv show to remind yourself why you avoid them. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I love you. <laughs> wow. Throw a coin to your witcher. <laughs> <laughs> and then quickly, never again. Toss a uh, Venmo to your coach. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, gosh. All right. How about you, fu- <laughs> I was about to say, how about you fuckers? But no, I love you. How about you, friends? Uh, Al and I continue to be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, we already established that Pippin's doing a load of nothing. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> uh, I'm very busy just being generally better than other people. Mm, we'll see about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't really have a big follow-up to that. All right. Anything else? We'll have more things to make fun of you later. Wow. All right. As always, if you have an idea or prompt to submit, head on over to nostorysacred.com slash submission. Follow us on Twitter at nostorysacred or send an email through contact at nostorysacred.com. Your hosts have been Alex McDonald, Brendan McDonald, Pippin McDonald, and Catherine Crichton. Editing and music for this episode done by Brendan. Transcript done by Ashley DaCosta. Art by Jay Wolf. Show notes and transcript are available at nostorysacred.com. Thanks for listening, everyone. And please rate, review, and subscribe to No Stories Sacred. You can also visit our Patreon page to support the show and get neat rewards at patreon.com slash no stories sacred. See you next time when we talk about the 1999 film Wing Commander. <laughs> the movie. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm so looking forward to this. This is Brendan's birthday gift. Oh, <laughs> oh this will be a stroll down memory lane that I'm not sure I'm comfortable with. Uh, We're going to trip and break something. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> oh, no. Until then, where no story is sacred and any story can be changed. I'm Pippin. I'm Alex. I'm Kat. And I'm Brendan. And we're No, no Story, story is Sacred. sacred. <laughs>